Okay, so um, I put together this document as all the uh, all the ratios for you, and if you also look at your textbook, I think it's page eight hundred. I'm opening my book right now. Seven ninety nine eight hundred. On uh, page 800, you have all, pretty much all the formulas there with the exception of the free cash flow formula I gave earlier, which I'll, I'll you can write that again right here. Free cash flow equals operating cash flow minus investing cash flow. Okay, so that's the one very useful metric to add in there. Here are the categories that uh, the ratios can be broken down into. So the ability to pay the current liability, so really take care of the operation in the short run. If that ratio is bad, it would indicate that the firm is in some very, very near-term distress. We're going to look at turnover ratios, and in particular, be able to produce the cash conversion cycle. Um, so when a company invests in inventory and uh, they have sales on credit, they have to wait for the cash to come in. So um, that's where their working capital need comes from. So we're going to look at that. The shorter it is, the more, the less liquidity the company is going to need, the less working capital is going to need. Look at the overall ability to pay their debts. If you can't pay your loans and so forth, then you could go bankrupt. So you want to make sure that the corporate financial structure is such that uh, it's sustainable. And then we're, next we're going to look at profitability. So given that they're going to pay their debt and they have a reasonable cash conversion cycle, <clears throat> how is the company overall performing? And then finally, we'll just look at a couple of very simple ways as the value of a stock as an investment. And another way I like to think about these different measures is the ability to pay current liabilities is a measure of cash flow and cash management. So that's kind of a treasury function within the corporation. The cash conversion cycle is a function of the product service market and also your operations management. So it gives you some indication of how um, well managed the, the how well managed the operation of the company is. The ability to pay debts has to do with the performance, but more so corporate financial management. So these decisions about debt and stock and leverage, those are decisions that were taken on uh, by management. So your ability to pay those debts at some level is indicative of corporate financial management and the profitability. It's company performance, but overall executive management. So um, given the environment the company's in, has, has the executive management team made the decisions and pursued the strategies to enhance profitability? Okay, so um, working capital. I'm not actually going to do the calculations here. We're just going to walk through them. Current assets minus current liabilities. The less working capital you need, the better. So if you can get credit from your vendors and you get paid cash by your customers, that's better. Um, the current ratio. Current assets to current liabilities. The higher the current assets relative to liabilities, the more liquid the company is, the better near-term position it's in. Um, you have to understand, though, if you have too much liquidity, it may be costly to hold all that liquidity. So there is a little bit of a balancing act here. But um, having said that, a higher ratio would mean you're safer. The quick ratio, which is a conservative type of current ratio, it takes out inventory and other items. It just looks at cash, short-term investments, and net current receivables. So current receivables, less the allowance over current liabilities. So these items are super liquid. These items in the numerator, these are super liquid current assets. So these are going to be cash or can be converted to cash very soon with a little discount. Okay, 
So the higher the quick ratio, the better in terms of liquidity. Uh, the turnover and cash conversion cycle. All right, so you have these turnover ratios, which are a measure of a flow measure over an average balance sheet measure. So in this case, the inventory turnover is cost of goods sold over average inventory. But what we really care about is this day's inventory outstanding. So this is this 365 over inventory turnover, the DIO will tell you the number of days an item is staying in inventory. Account receivable turnover. Once again, you have a flow measure over a balance sheet measure. For accounts receivable turnover, it's net sales over the average net sales on account. That's to be credit sales over the average net accounts receivable. We saw this before. As day sales and receivable, it is also called days sales outstanding, or we're going to call it DSO. So we have DIO, days inventory outstanding, DSO, day sales outstanding. So this tells how many days it takes the firm to collect on account. And then finally, days payable outstanding, DPO which is the accounts payable turnover, cost of goods sold to flow measure over average accounts receivable, a balance sheet measure. You take 365 over that accounts payable turnover and you get your day sale, days payable outstanding. So we put those three days numbers together and we have the cash conversion cycle. Days in inventory. So you have an item in inventory, then you sell it. And once you sell it, then you have to wait to collect it. And that's a day sales outstanding. Now, somebody gave you that inventory on account. So you subtract out how long it takes for you to pay. And uh, this cash conversion cycle, <coughs> excuse me, the longer it is, um, the, uh, the longer it is, the more capital you're going to need. In some cases, it can be negative. That's not impossible. If you have a company that, is, that does just-in-time inventory, where items are shipped directly to customers, and then they get credit to pay for that, it could uh, result in a negative cash conversion cycle. So, oh, I, that's what my example is down here. So, say a company drop ships, then drop ship is when a customer orders from you, but the delivery goes straight from your supplier instead of the customer. The days in inventory is zero because you never the company never takes possession. Um, say the inventory is on 215 net 60 terms, and the item is sold with terms 0, 15, net 15. So your customers have to pay you in 15 days, but you get 60 days to pay. Then your cash conversion cycle would be a negative 45. You're, you have no inventory time. Your customers pay you in 15 days. You pay your vendor in 60 days. So if a company gets away with this, that would mean they have a lot of market power, that they have vendors that really rely on them or they're a large part of their business. And um, they have customers that really need their product. All right, let's take a break and we'll start. Actually, let's keep going on. Let's get through these. Um, here's ability to pay debt ratios, which is the first one is the debt ratio. Total liabilities, total assets. Um, you'd have to know your industry. I gave the example of banks, so they're actually 90% or more liabilities, which is super, super high, so that would be high for that industry. Um the times interest earned ratio is operating income over interest expense. So the operating income tells you how much expense you can cover. If you're going to pay interest, it's going to come out of operating expense or operating income, excuse me. So the larger this ratio, larger or higher is better. Okay. 
And actually, this would be a good place to stop because we're going to talk about DuPont analysis.